G'day and welcome back to more large ship design. At the end of the last video, I pointed out a problem that I noticed while I was making this one. There was something big missing from the ship. Turns out there were actually two things missing. We're going to fix the first one now. And the second one, it'll come up later. I don't want to spoil the surprise. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a gravity generator. With the way our cockpit area is designed, it's designed to be able to be walked around in. So we want to be able to do that even when we're outside a planetary gravity field. So we need to create our own. There's a nice little spot in that extra room we built for the reactor access where we can just pop it down underneath and we'll build that right there. That should cover our whole ship. In a later tutorial, I'll go through how to accurately set up your gravity fields so that you're not wasting too much energy creating too large a field. But for now, we'll just leave it at its defaults. Now we're back outside, let's add some color to this thing. To do that, you select a colorable block, press the P key, and that'll bring up the color selector. In here, we have three settings that we can alter to get the color that we desire. Hue picks the basic color element, saturation, determines how much of that color element gets added to the texture and value determines the brightness or the amount of white underlying that color that's added to the block. There are a few quick selection colors that are in this menu and as you alter any of them that will remain as that color for that session. So what we're going to do first is I think we'll start with coloring the hydrogen tanks. Let's make them a nice warning yellow orange color. And if I bring up the, hmm, the G menu, you can see underneath where we have our normal artificial horizon, there's an area that indicates the color you've selected, which is helpful when you're placing down new blocks because you'll know what color they're going to end up with so you won't have to recolor them later. To apply the color that you've selected to a block, you can use by default the middle mouse button. This will apply the color to just a single block. If you want to color a larger area, or if you want to get deeper into an area and you want it all to be the same color, you can use shift plus the middle mouse button, which will color an area five by five by five blocks. To pick up a color from another block, press shift P and that will pick up that color. You can then cover over the area we just painted yellow in a single click with that shift middle mouse button. With the tanks in yellow, they stand out a little bit more and it's starting to add some extra depth to the design as the yellow comes out of the area that it's shielded under the armor. I don't think I want to make this whole ship yellow or orangey, so we'll need to pick a different color. Maybe blue or... Let's go with green. And we'll start with the roof and try and build in those bits that I've been talking about where it makes it look like the ship tapers towards that rear large thruster. To my eye, there's an area that seems perfect for this. It's where we've got those two two by one by one slopes next to each other. We can double it up here and then taper towards a single bit of color at the rear where there's just that one ramp on each side of the central part of the ship. This will help break up that big flat surface on the roof and avoids that zebra crossing look that I was worried might develop. From the rear, there's two slopes that I think will look better if we make them green. So we'll add that color there. And then we've got to add the next bit, which if you recall, when I said I built those two by one by one slopes, I was kind of implying that they were all the same sort of part of the ship. So we'll color those bits off to the left and right as well. Now, while coloring that bit on the right, it's become apparent that we haven't ended up with the symmetry I intended when I built these blocks. So we'll fix that up on the right and we'll bring it back to where the slopes are on the left hand side of the ship. And we'll continue on from there. Now that the sides match where we wanted them to again, we can move on to the next bit of coloring, which is those areas coming down from the sides of the hydrogen tank toward the rear. This will be a bit more difficult to decide how we're going to do the coloring because I want to continue certain lines of the ship and break up other ones. And I'm not sure which ones I want to do each way as yet. 
Unfortunately with the colouring tools, sometimes you won't be able to get it a block, even though you can see it. So we'll have to grind down certain bits and pieces here and there so that we can get at those blocks, and then just replace them. It's a bit fiddly and a bit annoying. Uh, if you're colouring a large area, you can use that shift middle mouse button, and that will get into those blocks. But that's not always the best solution. So I'm pretty happy with how that looked on one side, and let's double it on the other side. And then, when we're finished with that, we'll take another look from afar and see how things are going. I think the yellow hydrogen tanks, they don't quite work with the green colour. I can't figure out how I would add green to the armour blocks to continue that green pattern, and I don't want to break up the two parts of the ship any more than they already are. So if we bring the green onto the tanks, we might be able to join those two parts up again visually. One thing to note while we're colouring these tanks is, depending on the block you're colouring, some will have more of the darker elements of the texture than others, and this can actually make two colours that are the same per the P menu colour settings actually look very different. So you might have to adjust this if it doesn't look quite right on a block per block basis. With this armour section at the front, let's try and visually differentiate the circumferential supports from the longitudinal ones, and we can do this fairly easily by just making a slightly darker grey. We can do this by just reducing the value setting a little bit until we get the grey we want, and then we can apply it to all those circumferential armour pieces. Like with the bit of the roof that didn't match, often when I go around painting I notice other bits and pieces that I might have missed along the way, and we've missed a bit of armour on that side, that right hand side of the hydrogen tanks. So I'll check what's on the far side and then I'll go back and copy it, and then we can continue on with these once they're all finished. So we'll skip ahead to that part, where all those pieces are now coloured grey and all in their correct places. The next thing I want to do is, I want to finish off the ramp. To do that, we're going to need to lift this ship off the ground so that we can place those two remaining ramp blocks. We can just go into the cockpit and we need to set up our landing gear so that we'll be able to unlock them and take off. We'll just quickly group up the landing gear so that we can control them all at once. We'll turn off auto lock because it annoys me and, well, it annoys me when it's not needed and then we'll take our G menu and we'll add a switch lock command to our landing gear group. We can then hover a little bit off the ground, head back down, and add on those two ramps. Even without the grids, we should be able to get them to look complete with just the armor plates that we have on us at the moment, even though heavy armor blocks technically need those grids to be fully constructed. I think we'll leave them the gray of the circumferential bits of armor, just to differentiate the bottom part of the ramp. Possibly might make it easier for landing. Who knows, I like it anyway. I don't want to use up all of the hydrogen just keeping this ship at a hover, so let's go back inside and land it, and lock our landing gear down so that we're not using any fuel while we're sitting here. And then we can go back outside and get onto the next part, which I think should be coloring the underside of the ship. And I'm noticing a small problem with our cockpit placement. Having the control center straight next to the glass does mean sometimes we get ejected outside when we exit. And should be something we consider when we're building designs like this and will definitely be something I'll consider in the future. Maybe we could move the control station a block back, which should prevent that from happening in the future. With the green colour in hand, we can try and do a similar tapering of the green underneath the ship, like we've got on top. We can't do it exactly the same because we didn't put the slopes down the same, but if we try a few things, maybe with just this double line of green either side of the central row of blocks, and see where else we might put it so that we do get that tapered look. If we look at the top of the ship, we had an extra row of green to one side, which we'll add to the bottom as well but I don't think we'll include the ramp at the front. We'll just start directly behind that and go all the way to the rear. 
Yeah, looking at it from the front, I think if we added green to that front ramp, it might look a bit odd. So we'll duplicate this on the other side of the ship. And since we misplaced one, we'll just fix that up. Then we can continue on and have a look at how it looks at the rear. Now, we haven't really done a taper, so maybe if we only do one of these ramps at the rear and then we turn the block that's in front of the thruster back white again, that will give the tapered look that I'm after. Luckily, I can still reach the ship to finish off this bit as I've run out of hydrogen again. At least I didn't die this time, though. I'll go and refill my suit's hydrogen tanks, and then... I think we're just about ready to go for a test flight. So we'll jump ahead to that part. Looking at the ship, I'm fairly happy with it. So let's pop on inside, and make sure we've got enough fuel, and do all our little pre-flight checks, so to speak. We'll wander over, step into our control station, and then let's make sure that all the fuel tanks have fuel, and it looks like they're all completely fueled up with hydrogen, all showing 100%. Our oxygen tank's also full, which is nice to know just in case things don't go quite to plan. Okay, we're good to take off. Let's set up our view, let's make it zoomed out with our mouse wheel so that we can have a nice dramatic takeoff. Unlock our landing gears and start boosting up. And we can't turn. And I... Ugh, I forgot to put a gyroscope on. Ugh. Alright, false start. Let's land. Let's fix that problem. And then we'll come back and try this again. There's a free spot beside the gravity generator, so let's put the gyroscope in there. A ship this large, you might consider putting on more than one gyroscope. I'm happy enough with one for now. I don't like my large ships to turn particularly quickly. I find that that leads to things like me spinning around and smashing bits against stations and whatever else I'm trying to land against. So I actually like it to be a bit slow. But still, you may want to consider adding an extra one. Or more if your ship's that large. All right, with that done, who's up for round two of our takeoff test launch? Ah, <sighs> so much better. We can actually control the ship this time. So, for a real test, let's take this thing all the way up to orbit. Our hydrogen tanks are full, and our oxygen generators have a fairly good sized chunk of ice in them. So we should be able to make it there comfortably. We'll still try and use the same ascent profile that we used in the tutorial about how to get to space in the first place, because we don't want to waste fuel if we don't need to. Um, we'll run this through very quickly and jump to the last bit of the tutorial, which is how to get this thing on the workshop. Made it! We're in space with our new large ship. Before we start moving around the ship, let's make sure that our helmet's on, because remember what happened down on the planet? We did get ejected out of the ship when we left the control station. And without a helmet up here, that could be deadly fast. So there are a couple of things we should test while we're up here. One of those is the airlock. 
We set up the airlock with the intention to be able to save oxygen by not venting out the airlock space into space. Um, so, let's go check that out. If we press the depressurize button, you can see that the vent goes blue. Now, something you might be noticing is that we're still showing a high atmospheric pressure. This is because the oxygen tank is full. The vent needs somewhere to put the oxygen that's in this space, and if the oxygen tank is full, it's got nowhere to put it. So we're going to have to vent this out into space, which is wasteful, but unfortunately we have no other option unless we add more oxygen tanks onto the ship and don't have the oxygen generator filling those oxygen tanks. With the main ship systems tested, it's time to get this thing ready to publish it onto the workshop. So, we want this ship to have a unique name. To do that, we get into a control panel and go into the info tab on the control panel. In here you'll find a name option and we can change this to something unique. In this case, this thing looks a little bit like a horseshoe, so I'm going to call it the talisman, but I'm also going to name it the tutorial to make it a bit easier for people to find it if they have any interest in checking out the design for themselves after having a look at the video. And these are all up on the workshop already. We'll head back outside through the airlock so that we can get an angle on the ship that will be our main promotional image for the ship on the workshop. The little thumbnail that people can see when they look around and have a look at our designs. There are a number of considerations to be had when you're picking the angle you take your main thumbnail from. Make sure that the ship is well lit or the design, whichever design it is you're putting up, is well lit. If you make it all dark and it's hidden in shade, it can be very difficult for people to see what's actually there. So think about your lighting, think about what's in the background, whether you want a station to be there, a planet, whatever, the skybox, as we're doing here. Just try and construct the images in a meaningful way. Steam also allows you to put other things like videos, and other images into the workshop item. So you can take screenshots from a number of different angles. So you can add those images later to your workshop item to give people an even better idea of what your ship design or base design or whatever it is. And now that that's done, we can publish it. When you press Control B to create the blueprint for the ship, it'll bring up the blueprints menu. You can also bring up this menu by pressing F10. If we scroll down to where the talisman is, then go to details and then you'll see a publish button. This brings up a dialog box with only a single tag, most of the time you won't be checking this, and you click OK. Then when the upload's finished, it should open up in the Steam overlay and show you your published workshop item. You can then edit all of your details and add those extra images that you can take as screenshots, or you can do all this once you get back out of Space Engineers and do it all in the Steam interface or even in your browser. And there you have it. A complete large ship that's capable of going all the way from the planet's surface up into space. It's got basic refinery setups. You can use this for any exploration. The only thing I wouldn't recommend is fighting with it as with its setup right now. The only way you could fight is ramming and with light armor, I don't see that ending well. Unless fireworks and chunks of your ship flying off in random directions is your idea of fun, and sometimes it's mine, I'll admit it. There's still more to come in this tutorial series, so I look forward to it. And now, let's throw a brick through an asteroid. 